Hello. <clears throat> Welcome back to the Code Circus. Uh, today we are going to talk about a very special type of variable called strings. In our last video we talked about all different types of variables and one of them was strings but we're going to focus a lot of time on strings today because they're a little bit more complicated than just some of the numbers we looked at. The numbers we looked at are called primitive data types in that the information is stored right in the variable. So for example, if I said int um, an integer and I called it my number and then stored the number 10 in it, the number 10 is stored at the same memory location as the variable name. Strings are more complicated along with other of the same kind of variables as strings. These variables are called objects where the information is not actually stored where the variable name is stored in memory. What is stored in the variable name really is just an address to somewhere in memory that the information is stored. So when I create a string, let's say I call it name, and I put into that string the name Eric, let's say for example. Let's take a look at that. So I say uh, name equals Eric. What happens is in memory, name is created. The memory location of where the string letters, the characters E-R-I-C are stored is created. And there's a link between that variable name and the memory location. This is called by reference because we're referring to a memory location that has the word Eric stored. And that's essentially how a string is stored. That's different than uh, age, for example. Let's say age equals four. That's a primitive data type that the number four is stored at the same memory location as uh, the variable is um, linked to. So it's done a little differently. When you're declaring a variable in Python, it dynamically decides what the variable name um, stores. In other words, if we put a string in it, then that variable name is of type string. And we saw that last time if we just use the type command. And we type in the variable name in this case name, it tells us that it is of the class string. If I do type age, it tells us it is of the class int, and int is a primitive. There are two ways to store strings inside, or actually just represent strings inside of Python. The first one is with double quotes, which is what I've been using. This is a string. Nice and simple, this is a string. But notice that Python returns a value that is single quotes. That is the second way of storing information. So I could say name two, create another variable, and use single quotes and say name2 equals Tom. And Python accepts the single quotes just as easily as it accepts the double quotes. Then you might ask yourself, self, why do we have both? Well, suppose you wanted to do a quotation mark inside of your string, like a book title. Or you wanted to use a single quote in like a apostrophe. In those kinds of cases, there would be no way to do that using the quotation marks if that was the only way of creating a string. So if I wanted to do a title, we'll use title string using my snake case. I could start with single quotes and say, the book is called, and then use double quotes the life and times of Mr. McLaughlin. Great book. 
and then end that with single quotes, and Python has no problem with that and would display title string. When I press enter, it'll display the string and includes both sets of quotes. So that's a really useful skill. One of the other things that we can do with strings, just like we could do with numbers, is we could do operators. But the operators behave a little bit differently. Like if I do 3 plus 4, it gives me the number 7. If I take a string called happy and add it to a string with a space, just because I want a space in there, called day, it puts them together with the plus sign. That's called concatenation. And it adds the two strings together, which I think kind of makes sense to most of us that it would do that. The next one is a little strange. Um, it actually does multiplication with strings. Like, uh, let's say we do AB as a string, and then I say times 10. It actually takes 10 copies of AB and puts them next to each other. It repeats the multiplication like successive addition, which would be successive concatenation. Now, you can't do AB <coughs> minus B. Uh, that doesn't work. That's going to give us an error. There is no subtraction of strings. There's just the addition, which we could call concatenation, and multiplication, which is really just repeated concatenation over and over and over again. So we've learned about how to do single quotes and double quotes. We've learned about how to do some operators, um, addition and multiplication with strings. What if we want to use a single quote, but we also want to use single quotes around our string. So maybe we have an apostrophe in there. And there's also a title where we need double quotes. So we kind of run into this situation where we can't use the double quotes because it's around the title. And we can't really use the single quote because it's around our um, apostrophe. So like we could say, uh, single quote, a great book is, and then use quotes, the life and times of Mr. McLaughlin. And then if we wanted an apostrophe in there, apostrophe, as in Mr. McLaughlin's life, we'll say that. What happens that when I do the double quotes then and I try to do a single quote, Python's going to get really confused. That doesn't work because it thinks this single quote here where the S is, is ending the string literal. And then this double quote here is just kind of ignored because it's within the two single quotes. So it looks as the string as just this much of it. That part is the string literal. And then this thing down here, S life, it gets really confused about what that is. Uh, because it doesn't actually start with a single quote, it just starts with the letter S, and it's calling that an invalid syntax. So this presents kind of a problem that we have to figure out some way of dealing with. And fortunately for us, the programmers who wrote Python, or the programmer, I should say, who wrote Python and his team, um, found a way of dealing with that. And it's actually a pretty common way of dealing with it. We do the same kind of thing in many, many different languages. It's called escaping where you escape out of the string. And the way we do that is I'm going to say, single quotes, I, and I'm going to do a backslash. So that backslash tells the computer that the next character is going to be special. I'm escaping out of the string for a second, and I want to let the computer know that the next character to just show what that character is. So this one is going to be a single quote. I'm so excited about the book, The Life and Times of Mr. McLaughlin. And now I can end that with a single quote. And now, um, 
Python has no problem with it and takes uh, the uh, single quote and ends up storing that information as a single quote. So as a for my apostrophe. So everything works out great. There are no syntax errors. So this is an escape character. <coughs> we could also do other kinds of escape characters. There are escape characters with um, quotes. So backslash quote is an escape character. Backslash n means new line. Backslash t is a tab. So those are all really good uh, escape characters that we can use to make our strings a little bit better. So we could kind of do something really cool. And I can say my string equals, let's do, start with single quotes. And we can say something like backslash T for a tab. This is a great book, quote, The Life and Times of Mr. McLaughlin with an apostrophe. Again, I'm going to use an escape character, Mr. McLaughlin's cats. I don't really like cats, but we're going to say cats anyway. I don't know, it just came to me. And then I wanted to do a new line. I can do another escape character, backslash n, that'll do a new line. P.S. He hates cats. And I'm going to end the string literal with a single quote. OK, so now I have my whole string in here my string backslash t is a new tab this is a great book the life and times of mr mclaughlin uh, is my title of my book again backslash apostrophe we'll get the escape character for the apostrophe and then a new line so now if i say my string it gives me the whole thing now you might be saying why is it still giving me the backslash tabs it's because i'm not actually asking Python to execute that string and actually print it out. So what I'm going to do, there's a command called print. Notice the difference. Now it actually executes the escape characters. It does the tab. It does the new line for me. It does the escape character. So just putting my string will display what is stored in my string, but actually executing my string requires a command called print. So if we want to print something on the screen, we actually have to use that command if we want to display the way it should be displayed using the escape characters. The next thing I wanted to look at is something called multi-line strings. A multi-line string is sometimes necessary because maybe you want to type a whole lot, like a whole paragraph. And it's just easier if, instead of doing those backslash ends to do new lines every time, if we could do a multi-line string. Say I call it my string equals. And this time, you know what? I'm going to do this up in the code up here. And the way I would make it work is I would say, let's call this my message. And I would say my message equals, and instead of doing single quotes, what I would do is triple double quotes or triple single quotes. Both work. And now I can create a string. And notice how it stays green. This is, oops really long string. Enter. And it will keep going no matter how many lines I type. It will keep it all in one string. The beauty of this um, is that I don't have to worry about a word wrap. 
where it goes all the way across the screen and it kind of scrolls all along. If I was to do a screen, a message called my message two and said it with a single quotes and just started typing, um, watch what happens. It, it ends up scrolling the screen and it makes it really, really, really hard to read that string like that. Now, if I were to put in a carriage return in there, Python is very white space concerned. In other words, it, it pays attention to carriage returns and tabs and spacing. So it would look at this line right here and say, oh, this string ended. And I would get a syntax error. I think I actually was able to show that pop up right there. Can I see it says syntax error? There we go. Syntax error, end of line, was scanning string literal. So it gives me some kind of syntax error. It doesn't make any sense. And then this doesn't make any sense because it's, it's just a bunch of letters. It doesn't start a string literal. So we kind of have the same kind of uh, syntax error. So that won't work. If you want to do multi lines, you have to use the triple single quotes or actually I'll just change this like this, right? This triple single quotes work or the triple double quotes. Either one will work to give you the multi line operator. There are also some other advantages to using <coughs> the, um, the string object as a variable is that you get access to many different additional methods that are built into Python for you to use, such as capitalization, uh, centering, counting the characters, finding a particular character, formatting it, checking uh, whether it's lowercase or uppercase. There's a whole bunch of different string methods that we have access to in Python. And in fact, we can go ahead and look up the Python 3.7, I think this is the version we're using, string class. And we can see all of the different string operators, let me put this over here so we can see it, that are included in Python. And it tells us what each one of these does. Uh, we could do formatting, parsing, get values, uh, all kinds of different things that we can do with this string. And you can look this up and go through and see all these different string manipulations inside of Python all the different things. It's all listed here for us to, to come and take a look at and explore. So we're going to save some of those for another the next lesson. Because I wanted to leave time to do one last thing. Suppose I wanted to display my message inside my 3D environment. Well, let me bring up some code here. I've created a message called hello world, and I've printed that message into the interactions window with the print command. And we learned about that. We did that in that shell command um, when we did the print. But we can also print it in our 3D environment. But we have to do a little bit more work because we can't just print it. What we have to do is we have to create a place in our 3D world to put this. So first I've created an X, Y, and Z location in my three-dimensional world. And for me, these are the numbers that worked well, negative 0.55, 1.4, and 3.95. That puts uh, my three, my, my word in space in front of my starting position. Remember we created that starting position. And if we just put the text in without setting the X, Y, and Z, the text would be at exactly at our starting position. And if we backed up a little, we'd be able to see it. But if we don't back up, we can't really see it at all. So I'm just moving it a little bit to the left so it's kind of centered and moving it uh, in front of me and moving it a little bit up off the ground so it's not at the ground. Then I'm going to use a viz object. And remember, we created the viz object earlier with viz.go and imported viz. And I am going to call a method called add text. This adds in the text. But then I also need to set the position and say text dot set position. And I'm going to use my numbers x sign, y sign, and z sign. This is called a, um, a list. 
We'll get into lists more with lists later. And then I'm also setting the scale so that way I know the size of the text. So you need to do all of those things in order to get my message, which is stored in a variable up here called hello world, to appear on the screen. So let's go ahead and run this and see what it looks like. And there we go. It now says hello world and I have it pasted right on my little sign in my circus. And you can see when I move around, I can see my circus and I can see it's right on the sign. Now it's a flat word, it's just text. If I wanted to make it 3D text, there is also a command to do that, but you can see how it kind of floats off the sign just a little bit. It's not exactly on the sign, it's pretty close to on the sign, but there you go, you can see that it kind of floats right above the sign there. You see the space right there? So it's not exactly on the sign, but it is uh, pretty close. So that's how we're going to do a lot of our print statements. We're going to end up experimenting with these print statements and posting them into our 3D world, which can be a lot of fun. That is all I have for you today. I will see you next time in the coding circus.